So I'm going to try and explain uh, the two models together. So this is Cotter's eight-step model that uh, we'll be looking at first. And uh, you can get a really good look at Cotter's eight-step model from his Urgency to Change book. Uh, uh, there's a few books that he's written on um, organizational change and so you can go and look there but this is his eight step change model and what I'm going to do for you is I'm just going to draw out the eight steps kind of in three separate chunks okay and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the first three steps here and because they go together in the model uh, steps one two three the first step is about urgency and then they go two and three and you can you can look at uh, the Goog to find out uh, really what the model looks like or maybe I'll include it uh, later but uh, the first three steps kind of go together and uh, they are all about creating the climate for change and so what Cotter says is that sometimes you can take advantage of the climate in the organization or in some cases the leader will want to create a climate for change by creating a sense of urgency not that we want to do that all the time so those are the first three steps The next three steps uh, are really the, the bulk of the work when it comes to the eight step change model. And uh, I'm gonna draw out those three steps over here. And those three steps uh, really have everything to do with communication. And there, there's different uh, applications to this, but steps four, five, and six tend to focus in a lot on the communication process of any kind of change initiative. And um, so, some would argue that communication would go first. Some would argue that it, it goes through the whole thing. Um, but in John's model, he uh, puts it at number four. And number six is what he calls quick wins. So the whole intent is to get to that sixth step to create some kind of quick win for the organization to start gaining some momentum. And uh, it, he lists this step as probably one of the most important steps in the whole process because without any quick wins, you're not going to create that momentum and that sense of we're accomplishing something or we're moving somewhere. The final two steps in his model are significant in the sense that uh, they kind of bring the whole thing back into itself. And he, he calls seven and eight build and then make it stick. And so what he's talking about is you're building on the momentum that you've got garnered in step six and the quick wins. And then in step eight, you're really looking at trying to make those changes that you've made, those small changes stick by continuing to work the process. But you're also looking at um, sustainability questions and making sure that uh, these small wins are gonna carry you through uh, with the momentum that you've tried to build into uh, the next round of the phase. And so what I wanna do now is I wanna take that and I wanna compare it to my HMAA model. And so I first came up with this model a long time ago. In fact, I came up with it uh, right around my kid, right around after my kids were born, uh, or we started having kids. And it, it really helped me to understand how to parent and then it actually helped me to understand how to uh, lead at work and in post-secondary education. And so the, the H stands for heart. And I throw in some Latin terms here because I'm a Latin geek that way. And so heart is the ethos or the core value of who we are and what we do. And that's uh, that's really at the, at, pardon the pun, that's really the core of what it all is. Now M stands for mind. And so... Uh, the the intent here is that we don't just have core values, we don't just have an ethos, but we have a logos, we have a way of thinking, we have a reason or a rationality for what we do, and uh, or some would say this is where we get our logic from. And so there's the heart and there's the mind. The third piece that I want to highlight for you is what I call attitude, and uh, there's a lot packaged in this word attitude and uh, I place it in the middle for a very specific reason you'll see later but attitude is the pathos or the pathological way of what we do um, and it's not just the path in the sense that you walk down but it has more to do with the way you feel it has more to do with your emotions than the actual steps that you are taking so there's heart mind attitude and then the last one that I wanted to highlight for you is what I call action. And action is the, 
the piece that most people see. Uh, it's the most prevalent. Uh, it's our it's our behavior. It's uh, it's it's what's most noticeable about everything about us. And so I call this the telos, or uh, and telos is really uh, the end of things, or the or the end of a trajectory, or the uh, the end of the means kind of idea. And so here we have heart, mind, attitude, action. And so let me explain how uh, I've come to understand how HMAA works. Okay, so like I said earlier, we have actions that everybody sees. And so with action, uh, that is what everyone sees primarily, and it's, it's easy to identify. But what I like to explain to people is, is that action is informed by something. And action is informed, in essence, by our attitude. So our feelings, our emotions... Uh, they begin to inform how we behave. And so it's not just good enough to look at the action, but we have to look at the attitude behind that action. And it doesn't end there because uh, I've come to believe that attitudes are then informed by our mind, are informed by how we think. And this is the real tricky part for people because people often tend to think that they can't control their emotions. They can't, um, they can't control their anger or their joy. They can't control their frustration, but it actually can be controlled. And so the mind now becomes informed by our heart or our core values. And so what is in essence uh, important to us begins to form how we think. And so there's some very uh, interesting questions that come up when we look at this in the sense that the heart will inform the mind and then the mind informs the action, or sorry, the attitude, and then the attitude informs the action. This is where we want to see change, most obviously, right? We want to see people's behavior change at this point. Uh, but in order to see that change, we need to ask ourselves the question or ask other people these questions about their feelings. Uh, how do you feel about change? Uh, because that, that's, that's a very important question. Sometimes we'll have to ask people, in essence, um, how does this change make you feel or how does this thing affect your emotions? And so when we start asking these questions, we're actually digging deeper into the reasons why people behave the way they do. Because when we look at organizational behavior or we look at individual behavior, there's always some kind of emotion behind it. And so when we start digging a little deeper and we start asking ourselves or other people uh, about things about what they think, so th understanding that the mind informs the attitudes, how we think or the mental models that we bring to a situation begin to form our feelings. Uh, one other thing that I'd like to mention here is that the mind also is the place where we frame our thoughts or we frame our perspective. And it's in this space here that we can really now begin to control some of our attitudes. Uh, we can control our responses to certain situations. But the tricky thing about the mind is that we have biases. And so that's at the root level of our mind. That's where we want to get at in regards to this model in particular. And so when we're talking about the heart piece here, we're really talking uh, about what, what do you value? Okay, so uh, I, could, I could probably spend a couple days with somebody and find out what they value just by watching their behavior and tracing this back. One of the easiest ways to do that is where do you spend your money? And another question that comes up for, for me in this area is what is non-negotiable for you? If I can identify those things that are non-negotiable, I can begin to identify those things that you value. And then I can begin to form a uh, an ethical framework of someone or even myself that begins to inform the way I think and down the road. So here's the relationship. Here's where I want to explain a little bit between the two. And so... When we look at the eight-step model, of which I'm going to build for you right now, uh, we understand that it's a process. And what some people tend to think is that it's a very linear process. We go to step one, then we go to step two, and we go to step three, and step four, and so forth. And we start checking off these boxes one to, one to eight. When I bring in my model, uh, you'll, you'll notice that I, I kind of separate the, the stairwell, per se, into three different sections. And so there's the lower section there. And then you'll see that there's a middle section of another three steps. And then there's the top section of two steps. 
And so here's here's where I begin to to meld the two models together. In this bottom step, you'll see that I, I place the idea of the heart, and that's where it would be. I also would place the idea of my mind being at the bottom of, of this stairwell. So it's not just a one for one or a one for a three step piece. It, there's actually a couple things going on here at the same time. But at the top of the stairs, that's where we're going to see actions really played out. And so in the middle now, you're, you're going to see our attitudes, our feelings, our emotions come into play. And we're also going to see uh, some of our values creep up in this area here. And so you can see that uh, my model covers off the eight steps that we've uh, talked about briefly with uh, John Carter's change model in that we have the heart and mind down at the bottom, we have the heart and attitudes in the middle, and then the actions at the end. And so this is this is what people miss is that it's it's a it's a repetitive or an iterative process and it kind of happens all at the same time. And so I hope that helps explain my two models. Uh, I'd be more than happy to answer questions if you want, but I'm going to actually post this on my YouTube channel when we're done.